Here's what's going on in my life lately. I can't look at my newsfeed without another story about a plus size model taking her clothes off in the name of empowerment. And it's making me a little bit nuts. Mayam, you're just a prude. Mayam, you're just jealous because you're not a skinny model. Mayam, you're sexy shaming. Mayam, you're fat shaming. Um. First of all, it's Mayam. And second of all, I'm not a prude. While I may be socially conservative, and I prefer that intimacy, for the most part, be a private matter, I understand that we live in a culture that celebrates sexuality and that sexuality is beautiful and healthy. And I'm not gonna lie. I have spent some of my life wishing I was pretty and skinny like other women, but I'm not constitutionally jealous of women. I'm mature enough to separate my issues and insecurities from the issues that I have surrounding women disrobing in the name of empowerment. The positive aspects of this uptick in women taking off their clothes are several fold. When plus sized models show themselves as desirable and beautiful, it opens up our society's notions of beauty, and that's a good thing. Many people do have rounder bodies, and it's a wonderful thing to celebrate women who actually exist. In addition, Many women who have felt shame about their bodies not being model perfect are seeing that bigger women can and should be celebrated for their beauty. This is empowering a lot of women to feel more comfortable in their relationships and their lives. Also a good thing. So what's Mayim so upset about now? Almost all of the models I see embracing their curves and talking about female empowerment are doing so by getting naked. And some prominent actresses and athletes, many of whom are known to inspire young girls to use their brains and their strength as a form of empowerment, are following suit with the same narrative. So what's wrong with this? Well, I think the trap that we're falling into is that we start to equate empowerment not with, with strength or intelligence or confidence, but with sexiness. So even if you are an athlete or an actor or a scientist or any kind of accomplished intelligent woman, the message that we're sending, especially to young girls, is above all else, be sexy. And no matter what you accomplish or achieve or stand for, what really matters most is to be featured on the pages of a magazine that typically displays women who are paid to maintain a sexy appearance. The message is, I should be celebrated. And the way that I do that is by presenting myself as a sexualized object. We live in a culture so confused about how to treat women. A culture where sexual assault and rape are an epidemic. A culture where pornography presents an unrealistic and often disturbing view of women. It should not be taken lightly that the message to present yourself as sexy and desirable may have more of an impact on young women than intended. Especially when it comes from women who make their living being beautiful with the help of making makeup artists, hair extensions, airbrushing, and in many cases, a lifestyle of trainers, chefs, and plastic surgery. We tell girls not to send sexy pictures and texts to boys. We tell them not to trust strange people on the internet. We warn girls that men may only be interested in using women for what we can give them sexually. We tell young girls that they are beautiful for being smart and that they should be celebrated for that. And we even remind people when they meet a young girl to try not to comment on what her dress looks like or how pretty she is. We have an awareness of the dangers of emphasizing a young girl's attractiveness or external appearance. And yet many of the women these young girls look up to are now presenting sexiness as empowering. It's confusing to me as an adult. I mean, why wouldn't it be confusing to a young girl? Obviously, getting undressed for the cover of a magazine is your choice to make, and no one can take that away from you. But because you're choosing in the context of a society that worships women who are sexualized, the choices are somewhat limited. That's what patriarchy and beyond choice, there's an element of responsibility here. A responsibility to demonstrate to young girls that sexiness is not the end all and be all of your existence as a woman. Posing naked or next to naked implies that you seek to be revered for that esteemed role in society that rewards women with money and fame and Instagram followers simply for being sexy. So what's my solution? Continue to tell young girls that their bodies are special and amazing. Encourage girls not to fear their bodies or their sexuality. Be explicit that no one has the right to touch you in a way you don't want to be touched, no matter how you're dressed. But we also need to emphasize to girls and young women that while there is nothing wrong with beauty or sexiness, getting naked is not the only way to feel empowered as a beautiful person. True empowerment comes from women being seen as equal partners in a creative and productive culture. Empowerment comes from getting an education, acquiring skills that make you feel fulfilled, 
and pursuing relationships that honor all parts of you. Until we disentangle the emphasis on sexiness as a mode of empowerment, we ourselves will continue to be confused. Confused about what is important, what is transformative, and what has the potential to truly inspire girls and young women to take on the world in all of its beautiful complexity. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to my channel. Oh, and one more thing. Thank you for all of the comments you're leaving. Continue to leave comments so that I can continue to make more videos that you wanna see. And no, Fun With Flags is not one of your options.